send you off. Hi, I'm Warren Buckleiter. I'm the guy inside those 3D goggles. They're called Project Morpheus from Sony, and they're designed to compete with the Oculus Rift. What struck me after trying two simulations with Morpheus was not so much what senses are enhanced by the experience, but what senses are taken away. Putting your head inside of one of these things along with a set of noise-canceling headphones is kind of like putting a sleeping bag over your head. It turns out that sensory deprivation is a powerful psychological tool used by some prisons and some schools to focus a human's attention on a particular stimuli. Just using, there's accelerometers in there. And gyros. And yep. gyros. So, so it's like um, technology that might be in a uh, controller. In a controller or a cell phone. There's one screen in here and it's shared between the two eyes. So the, you know, the left side of the screen is seen by the left eye and the right side is by the right eye. And then there's special optics to make that small screen feel like it's a really big screen. Because the lights on it are not just for show. The camera actually tracks those lights so it knows positionally you where it is. You can see over there. Yeah, so this is the camera. And then right now, I mean, this, this is again still a prototype hardware, but currently the, the HDMI port out of the PlayStation 4 goes into this box and that breaks out something that goes to the headset, the video go out to the headset, but also al allows the video to go out to the TV set. So okay. that you have a social screen so other people can see what you were seeing. So while you were racing, we could see yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Just make sure this is all okay. That's good. Can you move it around up and down to get it nice that, That's perfect right there. Right. So the more I tried these goggles, the more I became interested in how this kind of a tool could be used to focus a child's attention on a particular sight and sound and leave out all the others. This might be used for some sort of intense skills practice, or it could be used to present a historically accurate um, simulation so that you could actually put the child's hands and eyes and ears inside a historical setting. All of this is quite interesting and obviously could be used for good or for evil in an in instructional setting. And then when you mix in motion sensing game controllers like the Sony Move, you have the ability to pull gross motor into the simulation as well. All in all, I think you'll, you'd agree with me that this is an exciting new technology that needs to be explored. We have some kind of asymmetric game play ideas where they could do actually do things and you'd be in, experiencing them in VR. So they could use a traditional controller or even a tablet where they could actually, you know, maybe act kind of like a, there's, we have a demonstration where you're like in a shark cage and there's fish swimming around and one of the fish is controlled by a person who's drawing a path on a tablet. Sort of building this on, on top of the PlayStation architecture. Right. So it, it uses a lot of the stuff we've done before. Now I'm going to give you your right hand. I am seeing a bang. It's a big, big bang. Oh, it's a massive. Oh.